Jumping back to the runner's toolkit, the thing that struck me about it was that it's a box set. And I remember a couple years ago, the consensus amongst all those who were the powers to be within the game industry concluded that box sets were dead. No one would ever do another box set. And here is Catalyst doing a box set. Yeah, well, I, I guess I don't circulate around the right people because they didn't tell me that. You didn't get the memo. I didn't get the memo. But uh, so far, the, the response has been great to Runner's Toolkit. Um, because I don't think there's any magic or any curse about putting things in a box. It's what you put in it and what you make that's useful to people. And I found Runner's Toolkit to be really useful. If you just take the GM screen right there, that's a great tool. Uh, but then the cheat sheets, the compile tables, and all these things, uh, it wouldn't make sense to put them all as one book because if you, then you're just flipping pages around again, which is what we're trying to help people not do. If you have these resources that are discrete and different components but really useful, then people are going to respond. And so far, it's, uh, the response has been great here at Origins. It's one of those products where I can just show people the components and say, here, feel this cheat sheet. And it's really thick, quality material and durable. And as they look through it, they say, yeah, this is something I need at my table. Okay. Well, I was just curious about that because uh, I remember thinking to myself, well, that's a shame because I liked box sets. And uh, I picked mine up here, and uh, it's, a hefty, it's a hefty product. Don't throw it at anyone that you really like. <laughs> right. Well, as long as Randall Bills is the managing developer of Catalyst Game Labs, we are going to have some heavy stuff. <laughs> we are going to have stuff that if you need to, you can bring small mammals with it and feed your family. It's uh, some big, heavy stuff. So we'll keep working on the, the mass of products. Yeah. Now, see, Jason thought he was going to get off easy on, on this uh, particular interview, but I'm going to ask, even though I know better, fifth edition. Uh huh. <laughs> Didn't I say? <laughs> um, well, new additions are something that, that has to happen if you want to keep a game lively. Mm -hmm. Because people play the games, and first of all, the, an edition gets a little stale. And if you're going to have a product line, you need to have things that are fresh. But whenever you have an edition out there for several years, and in its original incarnation, fourth edition has been out there for a number of years. We're getting on about, what, six? seven years for fourth edition? Well, in fairness, so there was a, at least one year where... There, there have been a number of wrinkles in that time, <laughs> and not always the support that the uh, Shadowrun line should have had, or, I, and I, not from outside, but it wasn't supported inside yeah. as well as it could have been. Yeah, um, there, there was a lack of product right, right after the uh, fourth edition right. was released, and uh, it was too bad because Fourth edition did win the Origins Award. Mm -hmm. and, and it won an Any Award, which uh, it, it went in and took awards generally given at the time to D20 products. Yeah. Uh, and then the developer, Rob Boyle, went up and said his famous line about D20 that he always says right there at the end is that D20 causes cancer. <laughs> Very unapologetic, Rob Boyle always is. He's great. Um, but we, we've had that time, and that's a long period of playtesting. Yeah. So if you have that amount of time, you're going to discover certain strengths of the game. And I think Shadowrun 4 has shown that at its core, it's got a lot of strong concepts and it's got a lot of things that have brought people back into Shadowrun and that have overcome that long time uh, feeling of love the setting, hate the rules that people have had about Shadowrun. You know, people have always liked the setting and that's what's kept it going for 20 years. But uh, at different times, the rules have, to be kind, had varying levels of playability and yeah. it has not always been easy to get into it. And fourth edition reduced that barrier somewhat. Um, but there are things we can do to make it better. Mm -hmm. And so getting feedback from people, uh, getting feedback from the freelancers that work on Shadowrun, we have some pretty good ideas of what we can do to take a product and improve it. Um, just some things right off the bat. Uh, if you talk to anyone about Shadowrun 4, or talk about the flaws, or talk about what's still too complicated, Matrix is usually going to be one of the first things out of their mouth. So there's some things we can do to the Matrix to make it more integrated to the way the rest of the rules work, to make it easier to handle, and again, to reduce that page flipping that people have to do so you can be in the game. Uh, the other thing that I hear mentioned 
most often is the vehicle and chase rules and how vehicles accelerate and how they move. It just doesn't work with yeah. reality. And so that's something we can tweak. So when we're thinking about Shadowrun 5, we're definitely thinking about uh, evolutionary, not revolutionary. Okay. I think Shadowrun 4 remade things pretty well and we've got a very good foundation to build on. But we can take advantage of the opportunity we've got to improve it and to, to make an even better streamlined product. And so that is going to happen. There is going to be a fifth edition. I don't have a timeline on it. Well, that's right. I don't have a timeline on it. <laughs>